God bless you and grace and peace be multiplied unto you from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank God for this Sunday morning. Again, my name is Apostle Frederick Wilson, and I am the pastor of the Greater Faith Worship Center. Uh, we're located at 120 Satford Street in Hyde Park, Massachusetts. I trust all is well with you and your family, and you're dwelling safely there in your home. We have, God has given to me, I believe, a message for this Sunday morning that will bless you and comfort you and uh, to uh, lift you in your heart. And so, the Gospel of, according to St. John, chapter 10, and one verse, an outstanding verse that has two uh, questions, not question, but it says two things of great importance. Uh, we have all through life uh, to make decisions, decision, decision, decisions. And so the scripture read, as thus in St. John chapter 10, and verse 10, and I'm sure that you know it, uh, if not hear it, anyhow. The thief cometh not but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. And uh, these verses are written in red, to denote that Jesus is speaking these words. St. John chapter 10 and verse 10, I said, and also in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 17 and verse 27 and verse 28. And it reads that they should seek the Lord, any person. This goes out to both the saint as well as the sinner. That they should seek the Lord, if haply they might feel after him, and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. That's good news. Because the Bible said, if we seek him, we shall find him. In the day we search for him with all of our heart. That's an open invitation that's given to everybody. In fact, in times like these, people are asking, where is God? God is as close to you as the nose on your face. In fact, he wants us to seek him even in times like these. You have questions to ask him, and God can answer every question that's on your mind and your heart. You're fearful, but God can replace your fear and give you a word. The Bible declares, and so faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. God really wants to introduce himself to us and to us that know him, yet speak to us what we need to know because we have questions, we have questions, we have questions. And we have decisions to make based on our future as well. Verse 28 says, this is a wonderful word, scripture to hear, Amen, and to understand and to follow. For in him we live and move and have our being. That's enough right there. So God has given unto us this morning for every hearer, uh, I guess around the world, wherever you are, wherever you are, and you're watching me and you're hearing me. I don't care where you're at incarcerated, I don't care where you're at, in the hospital, 
I don't care where you are. You're, you're, on, you're, in a, you're on your sick bed and you're very concerned about yourself and life and this coronavirus. You're going to have to know that God is yet in charge of all things. This might seem strange to say, but God yet has, uh, he has a handle on the devil. There is a devil, you know, and he cannot do nothing without God's permission. God has given unto us this morning this subject matter that is entitled, There is a Better Life. Will you sit and repeat after me and say, For me, there is a better life. St. John chapter 10 and verse 10, the Lord Jesus Christ himself suggests to us two alternatives in life. Number one, a life where the thief or Satan has or want to take or to subtract from us to make us barren, fruitless, unprofitable. Then number, number two, Satan or the devil comes to kill and to destroy. Whatever you do in life, don't you make with him no covenant. Don't you take him as a friend, a bosom friend, because his ultimate purpose and Jesus here he lets us know. He lets us know his purpose. He comes, uh, he, comes, uh, he comes to kill. He comes to steal. He comes to, he comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. Yes. To kill is to cause the death, the death of. It means to strike. It means to beat. It means to destroy. I mean destroy. I mean destroy you. Graveyard dead. To take your life, your last breath. The devil is an adversary. And know that. He is the adversary of God. And those who have and will align themselves with the, the will of God. And those who will align themselves with God and the will of God for your life. God has a will for every man. Uh, I, I'm going to say this for every creative being. Every child of God. You might not know it as yet. God's thoughts towards you, my brother and my sister, are thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give to you an expected end. I mean a good end result. God wants you to live and enjoy life to its fullness. Yes. Yes. Those who will name the name of Christ and depart from iniquity. Hear the alternative that God has for us. In St. John chapter 10 and verse 10, it says, an offer to us. Jesus gives you a better offer. He gives to us a better alternative. He says, I am come that they might have life. He says, he said they might have, which, mean, which is a possibility based on one decision or choice. I say all through life, we must make decisions. Decision, 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 and choices. I am come that they may have life. He's speaking to humanity. And to have it more abundantly. Not to subtract from us, but more abundantly. More as an increase. He says more 
abundantly, more abundantly. I mean life, than life in excess, abundantly. Permission you, in the Greek language, to have an excessive amount. It is the abundance or the better life that God has for you. God is waiting, he's willing to bless us beyond our comprehension. The Bible declares in the book of Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20, Now unto him, listen, who was able to do exceeding abundantly above we could ever ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. What kind of power? The power of God. The power of your faith. The power of you walking before him uprightly. Beyond your comprehension. Yes, the, the abundant life. Life in excess. I want the saints as well as unbelievers to know there is a better life. Something to hope for. There's a better day coming in our lives. And we are waiting for that. There's some promise that God made you years ago that he wants to fulfill. Listen to me. Even in the season. I mean a better life. Yes. Even even, but even in the meanwhile, we must be careful concerning these phone calls in this season. Yes. The scams. The scams. They call your house. Anything that sounds easy, you want to question. You want to call uh, certain people, uh, these phone calls are agencies for authenticity. For authenticity, that they are genuine, what they offer you. Again, anything that seems easy. You want to question it. Yes. The Bible declares that the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and has no sorrow with it. Satan is very appealing and strongly suggestive to our minds, to our emotions. Yes and our souls, and our souls. Our spirits, our spirit must be constantly connected with the Holy Spirit because of his fullness, because of staying in touch with him, the Bible declares uh, because of his fullness, have we all received everything, every good and perfect gift. Let me take my time. Comes from above. And the Father of lights, in whom there is no verbalness. There's no change in God. There's no change in God. When God blesses us, we know for a certain that we are blessed. Yes, God. John 1, 16. There is a better life. It's not based on luck. It's not based on gambling or that demon of chance. But it's based on God's word. Every good gift. Every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of life. God, every good gift comes from God. God gives it to us. Yes. 
God is a God who gives but does not take back. He's not, like we said, as a child, an Indian giver. The blessing of the Lord, I said, makes rich and has no sorrow with it. Then our souls, I mentioned our spirit that must be connected with God constantly to know that God's a blesser, that God is our sustainer. He's the one, don't look at yourself, he's the one that makes provision for us. And we thank God for God. Then our souls. That our souls must be careful, uh, amen, as not being soulish, being more self-conscious, world-conscious. We like things. We like things. I do too. We like things. Wonderful. Don't allow things to be your main concern. You handle them. Know how to handle them. Don't allow things to handle you. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 26. And you have to get the scripture and set it to memory. This scripture we have known since we were a child in Sunday school. It's valuable to us. It will keep us grounded. It will keep us heavenly minded and then grounded. It says, for what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? That's a question. That's a question. Yet given to us by the Lord, even at this moment. What can you give in exchange for your soul? Yes. You cannot, you can, you can afford, help me God, you can afford to lose one arm. You can afford to lose one leg. For you have a spear. Um, you have a spear leg. They don't sound good, but it's true. But what can a man give in exchange for his soul? If you lose your soul, you have been cheated. God says, all souls are mine. Value your soul. All, all souls are mine. The soul of the Father as well as the soul of the Son. We take my time. But the soul that sinneth, that remains in sin, shall die. To exchange, or the exchanging is the giving and receiving of something. Or something else. That's how our nation thinks and functions today. Our lives, our lives, our lives has a great price. Our souls have a great price on it. And a return on it as well. Romans 5 and 8. Hear this. For God knows man. God did something even in advance based on mankind and how you, how you make choices in life and your place of destination. God wants to help us, wants us to see like we need to see uh, based on the spiritual opposed to the natural. Romans 5 and 8 says, but God commendeth his love. He demonstrated his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us based on the value of your soul. 
and your place of destination and eternity. You might not know, but God knows. But the power of choice is in you. You choose. Ye this day, like Joshua said, whom ye shall serve. And Joshua said, for, for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. The power of choice is in you. Sigma must understand that Jesus, I'm talking about him now, he paid the ransom for us, for our lives and for our souls, the redemptive price. St. Mark chapter 10 and verse 45 says, For even the Son of Man, the Messiah, the Christ of God, came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and give his life a ransom for many. You did not know that, or did you know that? The word ransom, ransom is the price of release for making redemption possible. Ransom, redeem, we've been redeemed from the slavery of sin. He paid the price. He valued you. He valued you. The song said, I was once, I once, I once was lost in sin, but Jesus bought and brought me in. I am, we, we can be ransomed or redeemed. We are twice his. We are twice his. One, through creation. It was God that created us. And number two, through salvation. There is a better life, for there is the free gift of grace that we can have. Let me, uh, I, hear a, I hear a story to share with you uh, concerning uh, a father made for his son, he made for him a boat, a, a boat. And the son valued that boat, but lost the boat. Uh, the, he put the boat in the water, and the water drifted beyond his uh, his hands and drifted beyond his reach. And that boat was lost for years until this young man grew up in age. He was going downtown and he looked into a pawn shop and recognized the boat that his father made for him as a child and went into the pawn shop he thought just to get it back. But the pawn man, the owner of the pawn shop said, you can have it back, but there's a price. There is a price to pay. And that man who was a boy, now he's grown, he bought that boat back and took it home and looked at it. And look how it was restored as when his father had made it and appreciated the fact that he brought that boat back. It was twice his. Twice because his father created. And twice because he ransomed. He bought that boat back to, for himself. So God ha has paid the ransom price for your life. For your sin to give unto you a better life. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. And behold, all things have become new. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 2 and verse 8, it says, For by grace are ye saved. Uh huh. And one can be saved. And that's not of yourself, not of your own or yourselves. It is the gift of God. We have experienced, you can experience gift grace. Grace, caress, the state of kindness and favor towards someone. I hear you, God. You're going to have to know a man and never find fault in God. He said, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. And with loving kindness have I 
with loving kindness have I drawn thee and I love thee with the everlasting love. God has loved you. But you are sinful. God yet loved you with an everlasting love. And with loving kindness, he's bringing you right now. To bring, he's bringing you towards him. To draw means to bring. It means to mix. It means to move. God's allowing some things to draw you to him. To give unto you a better life. Grace, a gift that's freely given to a repentant soul. Hear it in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, people, that he gave, given love, given love with grace and mercy, that he gave his only Begotten son, begotten, 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 one of a kind. That whosoever, uh, the greatest world's invitation. For whosoever, the world's greatest invitation to come to him should not perish. That believeth in him should not perish. The greatest escape should not perish. Which is the greatest escape. Should not perish. It's more than to experience a physical death. It is to be destroyed. Eternally. And separate from God himself. We don't experience. But God has with us a better life. Yes, there's good news. There's good news. Contrary to death. Should not perish, but have eternal or everlasting life. He has a better way. Second Peter chapter 1, chapter 3. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 3 says, According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness to the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Which is, which is on our part is moral goodness. God expects out of us moral goodness. Now he would that saying that he would, would not hold any good thing to them who walk uprightly before us. God has for us a better life. In Acts chapter 17 I'm almost through. Chapter 17 and verse 28. Excuse me. Well here it is that they should seek the Lord if happily they might feel after him. I like that word feel after him. Amen. It's like seeking after God. Sensing after God. Something down on the inside of you in times like these. While God has our attention, it's feeling hard after him, searching for him. There's always in mankind a voidness. And God is the one that sense that will feel, feel, will feel the voidness of him. And so something on the inside is feeling hard after God. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, God, uh, for God says, and this is all of us, for in him we live and move and have our being. Something in man, something in man must understand this. When you wake up in the morning, God gives you breath. There's a natural breath for uh, there's a natural breath that unbelievers experience. That's a natural breath. Breath. For believers, it's more than a natural breath. Breath. 
The word called uh, theopneusis. Theopneusis means the breath of God. It breathes in us. It causes us to inhale and exhale. Two types of breath. My brother, you are, you are yet experiencing the, the breath of God. God allows you to wait to rise up in the morning and experience natural breath. But the Bible says, in him we live and move and have our breath. There's a different life. Another breath that God wants to breathe in you. Oh God, the same light, God I love you here, the same light that's in God, that's in Jesus Christ, can be in you. It's called Zoe. The same light that's in God, that's in Jesus Christ, can be in you. A life you will experience in this natural life, and even that same life that's in you is called everlasting life. When you can one day you move from this earth realm even into heaven based on the breath of God. shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. I'm through. Um, I want to share this scripture with you. Amen. And this word can be you, can be for you. And it's found in the book of Ephesians, at, uh, chapter 3, and verse 20. I pray that it will waken your Self-consciousness. Self-consciousness. I mentioned the spirit that's in you that needs to commune with God daily. I mentioned, I trust the word soul. And we're, we're kind of self-conscious. Your soul makes you self-conscious. Your soul is more in touch with this world. The things of this world. You don't dress your spirit. It's in your inner man, not seen. But your soulish man will cause you to buy alligator shoes and, and tailor-made suits. Are you still there? Still there? And fine dresses because it makes you, it connects you with the world and the things of the world. Spirit, soul. Spirit, soul. But beyond, but beyond your soulish man, a man God has for you a better life. He has it for you right now. And he has it in time to come. When your spirit will be separated from your body, when your spirit will be separated from your body, God has the house for you in heaven. And so this, uh, this uh, temporal thing, the things that we like, and we're very thingy because you can't help it because we're made from the dust of the earth. Thingy, thingy. We're, we're, we're much too much world conscious. We must be God conscious, beyond world conscious and the fashions of uh, Paris and Los Angeles and the, uh, we must get above those things. Those things are yet temporal. But listen, let me just share with you the book of Ephesians uh, chapter 3. Uh, I'm going there, I'm going there, and you get your Bible open. And you follow me with the scripture just to know that God has for you a better life. There's some things you've been missing. I'm going to say something. There's some things that have been beholden from you based on the fact you're not really in Christ. You're not serving him, though you're blessed. You might be blessed with temporal things, but lacking spiritual blessing, temporal and natural life, but not the spiritual life. There's some things, and God, I love you, and there's some things that money cannot buy. Money can buy for you, and you're there right now. The finest house on the block. But money can't buy you a home in the house. 
Money can buy you to go to the finest restaurants in the city, white tablecloths and, and dark lights in the evening, but money can always buy, give you an appetite. Can't give you an appetite. And so there's some things that God has for you that supersedes the natural life. I, in the book of Ephesians, I said, and verse 20, hear this. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly. Above all that we ask or think according to the power. What kind of the power of God? The power of your faith. The power of waiting that worketh, that worketh in us. And wants to work in you, my brother and my sister, as well. The blessing of God that makes rich and adds no sorrow with it. Let me share a story. Let's share that. And you've been there. You've been. You've been sometime in barber shops in, at the hairdressers. Hit a door flings open. Hit a man. His eyes are flickering and jumping. Not just a man, a young lady. And they have something in their bags, something, expensive dresses, expensive shirt, shirt and tie. They want to offer it to you at a low price. But you know, that's not a blessing. You rather, based on honesty and virtue, pay the price. Sometimes that same person knows where you live at. He knows, she knows where you live. And will break in your house and take back that same clothing or appliances they sold you. Jesus said, and I'm through. He said, but himself, he said, the prince of this world cometh and have nothing in me. Don't allow the enemy to come back because there's something he can find in you that belongs to him. Give him back everything that belongs to him because God has a better life for you, my brother and my sister. I don't care where you're at, around the world, different countries, but you can hear me. You understand I'm speaking English to you. But God has for us a better way. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by him. He's, he's the door for a better way and a better life for you, my brother and my sister. You don't try everything. Why not try God? Even while the world is in suspense, wondering what's going on, and you know there's a God. You know about him. Now it's time to get to know him. And God wants to present himself to you. You've been seeking him, and he has been seeking you. And now the time to turn to him. Will you bow your head where you're at? You're at the table having breakfast. Perhaps you're having your uh, coffee this morning. I can, it smells good to you, but I want you to pay attention right now uh, to me, and I want to pray with you. God's word carries spirit and life. He, he, he'll deal with your mind. He can penetrate your very being because God has your best interest at heart. Your future is tied up in the Lord Jesus Christ. What he done for you on Calvary, that redemptive plan. He wants to ransom you. He wants to redeem you back to him so you can have with him a uh, uh, fellowship. So you can have peace with God, number one, and then to experience the peace of God in your mind, in your innermost being. Just peace, peace. Uh, peace means wholeness. The rest is peace, shalom, peace, irony. God has peace for you. Not only that, he has a better life. 
with you. Father, in Jesus' name, I'm talking, God. They're watching me and they're hearing me everywhere around the world. God, I pray that God, I know you're with them right now. I know that you're with them right now, wherever they are. You're standing at the door, knocking as a gentleman. I pray that God will allow you in. Allow you in to stay with them for the supper. Supper means the last meal of the day. What it is, he will abide with you. He will abide with you. He will dwell in your innermost being. And God knows we need him. We need him. Believers as well as Unbelief. God, make known yourself unto them. You're the one that's saved. Not just saved. God, you are able to save them to the uttermost. And then, God, I pray that you comfort your people, your believers. I hear you saying, God, you're saying to us, wait on the Lord. Don't make no quick move. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and he will. Strengthen thine heart. We ask this even now, dear God, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.